So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Good number, 17 with Little and I and Mort. Did I count you at the beginning? Yeah. Okay, so we got 17. Great. Um, so what we're going to do today is moderate, straightforward, no, no big, big issues. Just make that you could probably hike up and back down again without poles, but these are like a, a safety tool. These make it a lot safer, both going up and going down. So how does it make it safer going up? You use them on the side for stability. So it gives you that extra little bit of stability so that if you glance up to take a look at something while you're moving, which isn't a recommended thing in the mountains, if you want to check something out, you should stop. Step off the trail and admire it. Because if you try walking and looking at things, that's one of the that's one of the challenges of guiding people in the mountains. You end up helping people that literally walk off the trail because they're so touched by the beauty of an area that uh, they stop paying attention to where their feet go. So the poles help you do a number of things. One is they help you maintain an erect posture, so you can stand up straight. The way to climb up the hill is not like this bent over, struggling, putting your, your shoulders on the poles to catch your breath. It's actually standing up straight. Because as soon as you, you stand up straight like this, head up, shoulders back, chest out, it allows you to breathe more effectively and get more volume of air through your lungs, which oxygenates your blood, which allows your legs to do the work. So it's important that you learn to stand up straight. And um, not any closer than six to seven feet from the person in front of you because they may be going up, the pole may slip, and this happens. And you get poked in the face and the person who does it to you thinks they did something wrong. They actually didn't, you were just following too close. Now, when we come down, you lengthen the pole about six inches and you change your grip. Going up, you have what's called a ice pick hold. Like, sorry, I'm not wearing gloves, so I have to tighten this thing. Oh, there we go. So that's the ice pick hold. Like that in the old days, you know, for breaking open a block of ice. So you hold them like this as you're going up. But when we're coming down, we switch the grip to this. And there's a difference. If I hold my hand that way, if I hold the trekking pole like an ice pick, the furthest I can reach out before the joints in my body force it to start coming down is about there. So I'll try to square my shoulders and you can see the extra distance that I can reach when I hold it this way. And it's like a fencing hold. Only the fencing hold is like that and you're just holding it on the top with your bottom two fingers hooked underneath the nubbin at the base of the hole. Now what does that do? That allows you to reach forward so as you're descending on slippery trails you have two solid points of reference as you're stepping down. And you never walk past I'll wait till the truck goes by. You never walk past your poles going down. You don't let the poles go past your ankles. Because now if you slip, they're not going to help you. And you could go forward. So falling on your butt is acceptable. You get a bruise, but that's it. But if you fall forward, that's where you start injuring hands, elbows, shoulders, face. That's where you can incur an injury. So you want your poles in front of you as we descend, and we can lengthen them so they're longer as we're going down. And always have two secure holes as you're stepping down. That's why they're so good in the mountains. They really make moving on uneven terrain a lot more efficient.